All right. So on D, D is a little different than what the other ones were because uh, we talked about before we left that you have to factor the denominator. Okay. So now with D, I'm just going to go through and list out all of my, my variable for transformations that I have. I know that A equals one. I know that H equals two. H equals two because you have to factor to find your H. This isn't your H. Your H comes from it being factored. Okay, your H, your X has to have a leading coefficient of one in order for that to be your H. So H is two and K is negative three. Does that make sense? Now we have a new guy at play. That new guy is our B and B equals two. Okay, so we talked about A and K. These two affect our Y. H and B affect our X. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you with me? Okay, so we factored. We have A, B, H, K. A, B, H, K. Okay, so what is happening in our brain or telling ourselves is that our H and our K, those are, no matter what, our vertical and horizontal asymptote when, when we're written in transformation form. So we have a vertical at H equals, I mean, at X equals 2. We have a vertical there and a horizontal at negative three at y equals negative three. Okay, what's happening to our original parent function points? One, one, and negative one, negative one, right? What's happening to them? Your x, your x is affected by your b and your h. Our x is, everything is a lie. This looks like multiplication, but it's actually division. So we're dividing by two. This looks like subtraction, but it's a lie. We're actually adding to. Okay, everything about your x is a liar. That's why they're your x. Okay. Mm -hmm. You missed that whole spiel. And then our y, y doesn't lie, y is what it is. A is one and our k is negative three, so it's y minus three. These are the transformations that are taking place to these two points. Does that make sense? Wait, I think I left them. I thought, um, I thought, oh, I thought H and K. Okay, we said that in order to find your H, you have to factor. You have to. Oh, I just, I just H, K, H. Oh, okay. All right, so when I have one, what's one half plus two? Two half, right? What's one minus three? What do we get? There we go. So we're going to go to two half, and then we go down to negative two. Yes? Because you have a B now. And in our notes, we said that. Let me go back. What is your B, dude? Your B is a factor of one over B, which means that you are dividing your X. And then, um, for B, the B is the in factored form. So we, what were you doing when I explained all of these? So right here, it says two X minus four. You have to factor it because you can't find your H unless the leading coefficient of your X is one. So we factored out the two. And we're left with x minus 2. So this is our b, and this is our h. Then we said that we now know a and k. a and k affect our y, and b and h affect our x. With our x's, everything is a lie. It looks like multiplication, but it's actually division. It looks like subtraction, but it's actually addition. They're your x for a reason. Just complicated for no reason, OK? No, actually, I have pretty decent exes. Except one hates me, but that's beside the point. That's another story. Is it the one that you? Why is this to therapy? Oh, I'm. I don't need therapy. Here we go. So I found this one. Now we're gonna do negative one. So negative one over two is negative half. Plus two makes positive one point five. Are you all with me? So we're at positive one point five. And then negative one minus three is negative four. So this is going to be at 
positive 1.5, negative 4. So these are where my original points used to be. Now we're doing something like this and something like this. And continue. Okay, so D was to show you how B affects your points. Do we understand how B affects our transformation? Yes, everything is the opposite with X's. All right, so that concludes transformations. Guess what? These rules will never change. They apply to every single function. Your A, your B, your H, your K. Do not change. The rules stay the same, okay?